In early 1975, a Georgia peanut farmer turned governor and his close staff began testing the waters in Iowa. They came out and they had a lunch, and I think it was at the Savory, with uh, me and state chairman uh, Tom Whitney and Ham Jordan and Jimmy Carter, and they said, and we basically told them, no, nah, you're not really going to sell here. I don't think, you know, Southern Governor, and, uh, we were wrong. I'm afraid I'm prejudiced because you are a farmer, and I am a farmer. <laughs> That's the kind of prejudice I like. <laughs> In 1975 and 76 was retail with a capital R. He could talk to people about uh, any sort of crops, weather, machinery, uh, uh, the hardships, the, the, uh, the value of a family farm. Uh, he was good at that. So was his wife. David Yepsen was a young cub reporter tracking one of his first political assignments at the Des Moines Register. I remember being assigned to cover him at a press conference. It was a Sunday afternoon uh, at the hotel Fort Des Moines, and uh, I was the only reporter that showed up. Um, Sunday afternoon is not a great time to be doing a media event. Um, and uh, so I had a wonderful time just chatting with him. He was eating grapes, and you see, and I'm just sitting there on a couple chairs just talking. And, um, it's a lot different than what it is now, but a lot smaller. Iowa Press, Sunday, March 2nd, with guest Jimmy Carter, former governor of Georgia. I think to be disassociated with the horrible bureaucratic mess that exists in Washington right now is a political advantage. I think to have had a broad range of experience professionally is an advantage. I'm a farmer. I'm a full-time farmer. If I can exemplify what the American people would like to see in their president, then I'll be elected. If I can't meet those high demands, and I hope they are high, I don't deserve to be president. He was not afraid to go in and walk right up to people who had never set eyes on him, had no clue who he was, put out his hand and say, hi, I'm Jimmy Carter, I'm a peanut farmer from Georgia, former governor, and I'm running for president, and I'm going to be elected president. He, he uh, had a lot of self-confidence. Tim Kraft ran Carter's campaign efforts in Iowa, leaning heavily on the Southern governor's interpersonal skills amid a cash-strapped, long-shot candidacy. When I first went to Iowa, I you know, took a quick stock of what we would need in terms of a headquarters, phone lines, postage, staff, transportation, et cetera. And uh, I submitted a budget to Atlanta and they said, we, we haven't got that kind of money. So I had to argue with the, with the financial people in Atlanta to secure an initial budget of $18,020. As the campaign entered the fall of 1975, Carter's organization was gaining steam and taking part in an Iowa Democratic Party tradition. The occasion was the state Democratic Party's annual get a bucket of chicken election year show and tell, the Jefferson Jackson Day dinner. The event attracted seven presidential candidates, three correspondents from the major networks, and four national political reporters. We grasp at straws in this uh, business, you know, and if you can detect the slightest straw in the wind or uh, any kind of reaction to a candidate, it can be helpful in the very early stages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It would suit me fine if all the candidates entered all the primaries and presented themselves to the voters. When I had first covered Jimmy Carter in Iowa, when he was traveling around campaigning in the fall of 75, and it was October, there were no other press around. There might have been a couple of print reporters around. We're fine. We've got a lot of good journalists here today that you'd be glad to meet. Uh, Johnny Apple from the New York Times. But by the time we came back for the caucuses, believe it or not, there was Iowa press, there was national press there. Because it, it, by that point, people were connecting the dots with what McGovern, George McGovern, had done four years earlier. You know, our goal in, in Iowa is to come in first. That's what we want to do. I'm not sure we'll do it. On the Democratic side, State Chairman Tom Whitney says a heavier-than-expected turnout is delaying things. But uh, the results are slow. We've had the largest caucuses we've ever held, and, uh, or at least it appears that way, so they're going to come in a little slower than we thought. This is your first batch? Okay. We'll hold yours. Honey, what if you want to check them over? You don't know if they're right or not. 
At Iowa Democratic Party headquarters on caucus night, volunteers were still struggling to understand the delegate calculations, while media reporters turned to the resident expert, Johnny Apple of the New York Times. And we've got about 5% of the Democrats, and Carter is wiping them out, except for uncommitted. Political reporters, whether they're covering a race for mayor of Dubuque, or President of the United States are interested in who's going to win. It is true that I think that I understood how the system worked better than most of the reporters who were here. Uh, I happen to be fascinated with such things. So I made it my business beforehand to understand it. It is also true that a lot of them came and looked at my lead. <laughs> I don't know what they did afterwards because I didn't go and look at theirs. He didn't win the Iowa caucuses. He came in second. He was almost 10 points behind, uncommitted. But the fact that he did better than expected, the fact that the media was looking at him, that's what made all the difference. The media played a, the national media played a big role. Carter had taken McGovern's model and maximized it all the way to the White House. His playbook would be picked up and tested on the opposite side of the political aisle.